Hello, good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good evening, Katia. Good evening, Maritza. Good evening. Oh. Okay, how are you? How have you been doing? Fine, thank you. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, did you practice a little bit more your reading um, skill? <laughs> I was trying to practice this morning, but uh, I was reading all the all the text, mm -hmm. and it was um, uh, easier because I read it slowly. Yes, exactly. That's that's the thing, right? That with time you can prepare yourself like with more time you can look for words right you can like uh, set up your time you can organize better right so this was was easier i thought that it was going to be easier and for you katia did you uh study a little bit more did you investigate did you increase your vocabulary only i practice the reading um, mm -hmm. in, like maritza with time, mm -hmm. it was easy for me. With time, it was easier, and right? With big letter. Yeah, a lot, a lot better, yeah. Yeah, the problem is that uh, this is like, the preparation was not just to, 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 for you to have like a bad experience reading, but you have to take into account that in TOEFL, you have time, right? So you have to be a little bit fast. So if it is good for you to, to read like that with time, uh, look for words and things like that. But always is recommendable to to set up a timer if you have time, right? And, and measure how, how much time does it take, right, to to answer these kind of questions. But it's good. How, it, it, I'm glad to hear that, that you feel better, that, that you had more time with this, you were more relaxed. Good evening, Irena. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Good, good thanks. Evening. What about you? Uh, I've been fine. I'm, yes, it was a good day, I guess. Uh, nothing real bad happened. So I was asking uh, the other students if they practice the reading skill. Did you practice the reading skill? No, I just um, trying to answer the platform. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of difficult for me. Okay. Yes, I understand. It's kind of difficult, but we just need to practice. I gave you the material. I share the material uh, in the group so you can have more practice, right? But it's okay if you practice slowly. Let's see, Marielos. How are you, Marielos? Thank you, teacher. Good evening. I'm fine. Thanks, teacher. Okay. Thank how are you? Uh, have you practiced the reading material? Or any other reading? Yes, a little. I, I practice. I, I see the platform. Um, it, uh, the part one and part B and part two and um, read the, some exercise to the material that you oh. share with us. Okay, yes. Uh, also, I share some vocabulary so you can add it to your vocabulary so you can practice a little bit more. Also, we have yes. Maritza. Good evening, Maritza. Miguel, also Milton. How are you? Did you practice your reading? Uh, did you read a little bit more? Are you doing or following any of the advice? Teacher, good evening. Good evening. Yes, teacher, I I have to study about uh, one hour uh, yesterday, uh, but the, the material is is very very hard because it is most uh, vocabulary in in words, uh, but I. I don't understand sometimes, but it's, it's, it's interesting to, to practice. It's, it, I think it's very nice for us, for us, it's good for us. Okay, yes, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yes, that's the important part, right? That you need to, you can check the new words and you can check like 
how to practice the, the other skills, right? And also combine it with the reading. So that will help you also with the other skills, right? With also speaking and listening, that will help you because the language is English, right? Any, any, anyway, it's English and you will be able to learn a little bit more with that. Let's see, we have Sarah. Good evening, lady. Good evening, Myra. Have you been practicing any of you? Like the, the reading, did you practice during the weekend or today? Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. In my case, I have been practicing today because it's a little difficult for me. Okay. And some people said that with without the timer, with the time, it was easier. Uh, do you feel that it's easier to practice without the timer, without a set of time? It's easier or it's the same? It has the same difficulty. With the timer, it's more difficult. When we have free time, um, we have more possibilities to get answers in the correct way, but mm -hmm. <laughs> the purpose is to use the timer. Yes. And in order to, to be prepared when we have to prepare the test. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you have to be accustomed to, to use a timer every time. Yes, or at least uh, to check how much time do you take, right, to answer such amount of questions. Like in that case, you can organize your time better. But it's okay. It's good to know that you're feeling better with the reading. Uh, don't get frustrated. This is just to prepare for the TOEFL, which is a really tough test. So now we're going to talk about the listening. Have you been practice, practicing the listening or how do you feel with the listening? Do you think that it's going to be easier or a little bit more difficult? What do you think? How do you feel like listening in English? In my case, it's a little bit um, more easy. It's a little more, more easy. Why? Why is it easier than the reading? Because listening for me is, I practice every day in my job, but reading is more difficult because I, I don't, I can't practice in my job, but listening, yes. Okay, so yeah, sometimes we have a, like a skill, like more developed, right? Like listening or probably speaking or writing, right? It depends. So we are going to start uh, with this section, section number two. Have you checked the platform already? Have you checked it or not yet? Yes, teacher. Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. okay, perfect. So this is just a little, bit, a little bit of the information that we are going to check in the listening part. Remember that the TOEFL test is um, it's a test that we provide or the people provide to study in the United States, right? So in the listening, you are going to listen a lot of information like there are classes in a university talking about biology, astronomy, uh, physics, different things, right? And also you are going to listen conversations like being in a university, like for example, a student speaking with a teacher or at the campus with the administration of the university. So these kind of conversations would be like that, right? Would be like very uh, similar in that way, right? So this is because that's the purpose of the TOEFL, right? If you want to study abroad, if you want to study in the United States, you need to pass it. And also if you want to work, you need the TOEIC, that is another uh, similar test, but the difference is the material, right? The, the material you need to study, the, this kind of conversations, right? So this is uh, the main difference. Now we are going to listen, uh, this information is really short. It's just like an introduction for the listening section, okay? Let me know if you're able to listen and if you cannot listen to it, also let me know, right? About the listening section. The listening section on the TOEFL test measures your ability to understand spoken English. You will hear parts of a conversation or lectures 
lasting from 3 to 5 minutes. Each listening passage is followed by 5 or 6 questions. Again, no prior knowledge is necessary. So as you already know, uh, you don't have to study biology or you don't have to study physics or anything to pass this kind of test, right? So let's see, let's watch the other video, right? Just This is just an introduction. Challenges of listening. When listening, you must concentrate and focus your attention on the passage. You need to be familiar with the type of questions on the test. Read and listen carefully. Answer all the questions. You may take notes as you listen. Okay, so uh, also in this test or in this skill, we are going to learn how to take notes. If you want to, you can take notes. If you don't want to, if you feel that it's kind of uh, easier for you just to remember, don't take notes, right? Or don't try to write everything if you take notes also. Just uh, grab the important parts, right? You are able to take notes also. And um, also, we are we are not going to see the, the question. We are going to listen, and then we are going to read the question. And then I, I will give you like one minute for you to answer the question. And I don't know if, well, at the beginning, I guess that with the first practices, we are going to repeat the audio one or two times, right? Two times will be enough. And uh, at the end, like on Thursday, I guess, uh, I will have that we are going to have just a similar test as the TOEFL. So we are not, we are going to play just once, okay? So you will be able to, to take notes also. About the listening section. The listening section on the TOEFL test measures your ability to understand spoken English. You will hear parts of a conversation or lectures lasting from three to five minutes. Each listening passage is followed by five or six questions. Again, no prior knowledge is necessary. Okay, that will be the first part, uh, uh, the first part of the introduction. We are going also to study uh, the different questions. In the listening, it's not that important to understand the type of questions. It's, it's good to know if we are able to identify, but it's not that necessary like in the reading part, right? Uh, but it's good to know the type of questions we are able to, to find. So we are going to check right now. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's begin with gist content and gist purpose questions. Remember that the gist of something is the main point or key idea. Gist content questions ask you to identify the main topic or idea of the listening conversation or lecture. Gist purpose questions ask you to identify what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. You can recognize just content and just purpose questions because they use phrases like mainly about, mainly discussing, why does the student, or what is the main purpose. Here are two things to keep in mind when answering just content and just purpose questions. In the listening section, there will always be either a just content question or a just purpose question, but never both. This question will always be the first question after listening to the passage. Also, sometimes the lectures and the conversations can have two main ideas. In this case, the gist content or gist purpose questions may ask you to choose two of the four answer options instead of just one. Let's look at some samples of gist content and gist purpose questions. Okay, as she mentioned already in the video, uh, the GIST uh, content question, normally it is asked after the listening, right? Sometimes they will be kind of similar, but we are going to, to make some difference later, okay? Now let's talk about detail questions. Detail questions ask you about information that is stated in a small part of the passage. They generally focus on the who, what, 
when, where, and why. Detailed questions usually take one of these formats. According to the paragraph X, occurred because, according to paragraph X, which is true of, the author's description of, mentions which of the following. There are two major traps that people fall into on detailed questions. Both of them can be avoided if you're careful not to choose an answer simply because it contains keywords from the passage. The first trap is to choose a true statement that was contained in the passage, but that doesn't answer the question. The second mistake people make is to accidentally choose an answer that contains a lot of words from the passage, but actually it states a different idea or changes the relationships between things. For example, sleeping makes me happy is very different from happiness makes me sleep. Let's work on a sample question. Listen to the audio program about a conversation and try to get the right answer. I dropped my physics course because I discovered it didn't meet my degree requirements. You wouldn't know anyone in the class who'd like to buy the course book, would you? Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? Well, yeah, if it's within a reasonable period of time. Listen again to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? What is the man doing when he says this? Really? I could do that, could I? Were you able to get it? That's right. By him using a tough question at the very end, we understand he's confirming his understanding about what the woman told him. Therefore, choice D is correct. Okay, perfect. So um, the TOEFL won't be like repeating parts of the listening. Sometimes it does in some questions, but not in all of them, right? So that's uh, a good, that's why it's a good idea to take notes. And the rest is just practice, okay? Here you need to practice. And after that, you need to practice, right? About detailed questions. And you will have here more information also about the reading. Do you have questions about the material that we just checked? Preguntas, questions? No questions? No questions. Okay, perfect. So we are going to start with the listening information, right? Listening for TOEFL. So this week we are going to listen and listen and listen, right? Conversations, but first of all, just some recommendation. How do I practice for the TOEFL listening? We need to take notes, reflect on each passage, learn the TOEFL listening structure, get to know the TOEFL listening question types and set up a timer. I will give you more time because actually with the reading, you don't need a timer because you will listen just one time and that's it, right? And then you just need to choose the correct answer according to what you have heard. We are going to work with short passages with a short listening. So you will be able to practice your vocabulary. And also we are going to answer the questions for you to understand which one is which, right? So we are going to consider uh, short passages. It's easier to uh, sort through small bars of information. And we are going to understand uh, the answers, right? We need to reflect on the answers we are going to provide. So um, how is the structure of the listening part? If uh, the TOEFL has conversations, which are followed by five questions. So they are not like a lot of questions. They are just five questions lectures by six contains two parts, three passages in each part for a total of six passages, four academic passages and two conversations. Conversations are between a student and a campus worker, usually a professor, and lectures will last at least four minutes. So you are going to listen to four minutes, right? 
and it will feel like an eternity. You will feel like it never ends, but um, then you will be, you will have time to answer the questions, right? So expect around 35 questions in total for the TOEFL test. Uh, do you do you know uh, in the video that we just watched, like an introduction, she mentioned something about gist. What is the meaning of gist? Who knows? Essential. Is the Essential. yes the essence right the essence or the main idea right? So the gist content is uh, one of the first questions that we can find after listening to it. Then we have the gist purpose only in the conversation, not in lectures. You are not going to find this, or probably you are not going to find these kind of questions in the lectures. Detail, which is the most popular kind of questions, understanding the speaker's attitude, understanding the function, making inferences, understanding organization, and connecting content. So these are the questions that you are going to find. See, the GIST question is like, which is the topic of the discussion, right? And you write out the topic of the discussion or you choose the option, right? The correct option. Or what is the professor mainly discussing, right? The GIST purpose question is, for example, why does the student visit the professor? Or why does the professor mention this or that, right? The detail is what is stated in the passage about or according to the speaker, why do they say this? What do they say that? We have understanding the speaker's attitude. What's the professor opinion of or what can be inferred about the student? Understanding the function is what does the speaker mean when he says or why does the professor say this? Making inferences, right? We already know what an inference is, right? So what can be inferred about this or what does the speaker imply about this? understanding organization, how does the professor organize the information about this or about that, and connecting content. This is a question where you must fill out a table and indicate the correct information. So you will see a table, you need to fill it out, right? What does the professor imply about this or that? And you need to fill out the table. So those are the question types. So uh, if you have like incorrect um answer you need to understand why right what kind of question are you failing for example if you heard some challenging vocabulary words if your problem is the vocabulary if you misunderstand the topic of the lecture or if you misinterpreted the tone of the lecturer or the speaker right the TOEFL the listening part takes around 41 to 57 minutes and it, it has 28 to 39 questions so you need to set up a timer, that's why. So just to remember, you need to take notes, reflect on each passage, learn the structure, and get to know the question types and use a timer, okay? Do you have any question about this? Preguntas, questions, doubts, any concern about the structure of the TOEFL? No questions. <laughs> you feel like worry. You feel you. You look like worried, like like kind of preoccupied. But you're not worried, right? This will be easy. You will be. This will be easy. Kind of exceptional teacher. No, 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 no. You. It, this will be easy, right? Easy, easy. So some tips, right? Eliminate choices that do not align with North American academic values, right? So. Uh, as I already mentioned, this is related with uh, the university or talking about university or topics or lectures about the in a class, like in a class. So if you see a choice that it doesn't or it doesn't deal with it or with North American academic values, you just omit that, right? That is the tip number one. What are academic values? Campus workers that will help if it is their responsibility. So you need to eliminate choices that do match the position and campus workers are supposed to be helpful. So eliminate choices that make them appear rude or the student to appear rude, right? So you can eliminate those choices. What kind of jobs can we find in the listening? Like for example, a professor that is the most common, a professor, a librarian, academic advisor, a school newspaper worker, 
office worker. So if you listen to a conversation, it will be between a student or a teacher, a student and a librarian, a student and academic advisor. And these are the responsibilities, right? You can check them later. Uh, one question, are you going to need the presentation for the reading? Yes? Yes, please. Okay, so I will send it to you today, now that we have finished. And then once we finish the listening, I will send it to you. I will send okay. this one, okay? Thank you very much. This is a question, for example, this is a question for a listening, right? Why does the student go to see the professor? So this probably is a conversation between a student and a teacher, right? A professor to talk about her paper on farming practices, to ask if she can study abroad in Guatemala, to discuss her research on agricultural practices and environmental conditions, or to see if she can become a Spanish major. So you just need to choose one really fast, and that's it. You need to go to the to the next one, right? Also, academic values are professors who believe in critical thinking, eliminate choices where students need to memorize, copy, or apply no critical thinking skills, and professors believe in fairness, eliminate choices where students have opportunities that are different from others. So avoid answers where students get extra opportunities. The professor will give the student an extension. That is not a, an option. That would be incorrect. The professor emphasizes that the student must hand in the paper on time. That's the correct one. So that's the difference, right? This is another example. Why won't the professor give the student recommendations of people interview? So that is another similar question that we studied before. Uh, tip number two, focus on information explained in depth. You should take notes during the lectures and conversations, right? That, that these questions are not meant to test your memory, but rather your understanding on the conversation or lecture. So you are not going to memorize it or you're not going to learn it, right? You are going to listen and understand, and that's why you're able to write um, notes, right? You can write notes. The listening section will not ask you questions about specific details that are mentioned briefly in the passage. Like for example, what year the Columbus sailed from the Americas? So they are going to ask you something like this, identify one of the reasons why Columbus wanted to sail west of Europe. So that will be like kind of more specific. And also you will have transition words to connect information, right? Also as a result, while, while, so you need to pay attention to those words because they will connect information. They will talk about one thing. And then after that, they will talk about another thing and then about another thing. So everything will be related. So you need to pay attention in when they say while or as a result also. So when you listen to that, you need to pay attention that they are going to talk about something related to it, right? Probably another idea, but will be related to it. Transition words or phrases. When uh, for reading, right? Transition words help you understand connection between ideas. And when listening, transition words help you to understand connections and identify important information. So that's how you are going to identify important information. What are transitional words and phrases? You already know, right? Because you already know English. So like, for example, actually, additionally, also. To emphasize, we use above all, as a matter of fact, especially showing cause and effect as a result, consequently, hence, contrast, right? To contrast two ideas, although at the same time, but contrary, all of those ordering right afterward and then finally first second and concluding all in all as noted above finally in conclusion so if you listen to that they are going to finish right they are about to finish so uh passive le listeners try to understand everything they hear they do not think about what they are listening you need to understand why you are listening what is your goal? Your goal is to get information, right? So you need to know why you are listening to um, the material or the, the conversation. So think of this as many goals you wish to accomplish. I want to understand the student's problem, for example. I want to hear 
how the campus worker offers to help. I want to know how the student feels about the advice. So those will be some of, of, of the goals of the conversations. And in the lectures, I want to find an important detail within the first minute. I want to identify at least two ways the teacher explains the topic. I want to understand what the teacher wants to wants the students to know. So those would be mini goals in lecture. So we will have two kind of uh, listenings. Five rules for note taking. So if you're not used to note taking, try to use this, right? Write down mostly nouns, verbs, and adjectives. You are not going to have time to write all of it. Like for example, if somebody says, hi, how are you? How you been doing? You're not going to have time to write all of that, right? So write some words only. Write down mostly consonants. Know your core symbols. Include seven words or less per line. And indent when two pieces of information are connected. For example, this is an example of a note. If I, if you listen, for example, if you listen, since the 1980s, meteorite finds in the Antarctic have dramatically increased our knowledge of space and its materials. So how am I going to write all of that? So we in the 80s, since the 80s, right? So I just write 80s, right? Meteorite finds in the Arctic, meteor, so meteorite. This is the word meteorite, so in contraction, right? Antarctic, dramatical increase. So I can use an arrow to say that it's going to increase knowledge space material so you need to understand your notes probably you are not going to understand my notes but you have to understand understand yours right so i know what i write and that's it right this is an example of a student's notes of a conversation so if you don't understand anything that's okay because the important part is that they understand right what they write listening tip number five make your eyes your enemy so don't get distracted okay because you are going to be looking to one thing for example when you are talking to someone we use our eyes like for expressions for if they are moving their hands in this way uh just listening we are not going to have that so be careful with your eyes right focus uh tip number six identify the question type we already know the, the questions like GIS content, GIS purpose, detail, understanding the speaker's attitude, understanding the function, making inferences, understanding organization and connecting content. And these are the examples that we were checking before. Sometimes in some questions, you are going to have this icon. This icon, for example, it says, why does the professor say this? they are not going to write it. So you are not going to click in this icon. You are going to listen a little bit of what the professor say, and then you need to choose the correct one, right? But that will be in the TOEFL, right? In the TOEFL. In the practices, we are not going to have that. Plan your time management. So we are going to give you one minute for you to answer each question. I will give you one minute after, um, per question, right? Per question after listening to the audio. So watch the clock and take great notes. Those will be the two rules for time management. And another tip, when it is time to answer the questions, you will only be able to use your memory and your notes. So start taking short notes. They can help your memory and help you understand. With time, try to write more notes and don't misunderstand what you listen. So you are going to have time. If you are not used to take notes, it's okay. Begin with just some words, right? Just some words to help you. And then you are going to be increasing and getting better and better and better. Uh, this is one of the examples for the ETS. I will leave you a link here for you to, to do like an ETS, a TOEFL example test, a mock test. And this is how it looks when you are taking the test in the ETS. The ETS is the, the company that, or enterprise that provides the TOEFL. They created TOEFL, right? Let's see. And listening number eight, use additional resources. We have a web page 
is Scientific American. You can find a lot of listening about our podcast, academic pod, podcast, Scientific American. You can start listening podcasts also. Another page is TED-Ed. This is like educational, um, like educational videos with transcripts also. If you can use material with, with transcripts, that will be very useful for you. And you can find this in YouTube also, the TED Talks or TED-Ed. And Google Scripts. Another uh, option that you can have is, for example, you need to you need to practice with material that you like, right? For example, if you like series, you can go to Google Scripts and uh, uh, you can get the script for, for example, TV show Friends Season 1, Episode 3, Script. So you will find the script there. And you can watch the series and you can read what they're saying. So that is another option. And uh, the last tip will be track your progress, right? So it's okay for you to, for example, write a journal or I don't know, uh, something that to track your progress for you to know that you are getting better and better, right? So practice with an audio that has a transcript, even when it is something enjoyable. Track your progress with a journal, write the words you learn each day. Building a skill takes some time. Don't try to understand everything. You have to understand the most important parts of the information, just the main idea. Don't rely on your eyes. Listening is like taking on the talking on the phone. You'll only have the voice. Don't take bad notes. Focus on your notes. Don't write anything. Only important parts of the listening. Um, skip prepositions, articles, pronouns, like I went to the store, went to the store, right? Don't write the main idea. Listen to the whole listening practice. Sometimes the main idea is not a sentence or a word. Think like a student and think about the information you are given and why. So we are going to leave this for tomorrow because we are going to have a practice right now. Um, before the practice, I will ask you, do you have any question right now? Do you have any doubt? Any comment, commentario, suggestion? Any suggestions? No? For me, no. Okay. No. Okay, so we are going to have a test right, right now. Just It will be very easy, right? It will be a conversation. So don't worry about that, okay? Don't worry. It will be very easy. So I will play right now. Just let me look for it because it's the, the audio. I have it here. And we are going to listen, okay? Okay. Just let me find the conversation. Okay. I guess I have it here. So we are going to practice just one audio today. And tomorrow we will have more, right? We will have uh, more practice and I will tell you how to take notes tomorrow because I have, I have talked a lot and you need to practice right as soon as possible. So let me share the screen again. Okay. Now we are going to listen a conversation between a student and a professor. And after that, you can take notes as you want, right? If you don't want to take notes, it's okay, don't take notes. So we are going to listen to this conversation and then we are going to have like four questions and we are going to answer. After that, I want you to tell me if you feel that it was easy or not, if you have any suggestions, or if you have any comment, okay? So we are going to start with this conversation. It's this like a TOEFL listening. Okay. Now I'll listen to a conversation between a student and a professor. Hi, Professor Michaels. Yes? My name is James and I'm a journalism major here and I was wondering... If you're here to audition, James, I'm sorry, but this play is only open to theater majors. Because it is part of the final project for one of my classes. 
Only students who are interested in taking my elective their senior year can be in it. Oh, uh, actually, I'm not here to audition. I was hoping if I could ask you a few questions about Shakespeare, specifically about the play Hamlet, uh, if you have a couple of minutes to spare. Oh, sure. Sorry I jumped the gun there. I've already had several students today try to audition who weren't theater majors, so I just assumed. It's no problem. I understand. Good, good. So, what would you like to know? Ask away. Thank you. Uh, so, I want to verify some details about the play. For one, does Hamlet take place in Denmark or Germany? Hamlet is from Denmark, and the setting of the play is a castle in Denmark. Okay, great. Uh, and can you explain to me the situation at the beginning of the play? Uh, it's so confusing. Who is married to who? Who is related to who? <laughs> sure. It can be definitely confusing. So, Hamlet's father, the king of Denmark, has just died. And when Hamlet returns home, he finds that his mother, the queen, has already married someone else, who turns out to be Hamlet's uncle, or the dead king's brother. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, definitely sounds dramatic. Uh, have you ever been in Hamlet or directed the play? You know what? I hate to say this, but I haven't been in a production of Hamlet, nor have I directed one. It's one of my favorites, though, both of Shakespeare and in general. I would love to direct it someday. It's such an exciting play, lots of great characters. Have you seen it? I read it in high school, actually, but I haven't seen it performed. Maybe the school should put on a production of Hamlet. Absolutely. Maybe we can do that next year. What did you say your name was again? Oh, uh, James. All right, James. Thank you. I'm sorry, but I've got to run. I need to head to my next class. But if you have any more questions, my colleague Professor Thompson also loves Hamlet, and I'm sure he could answer any questions you might throw at him. Awesome. Thank you. I'll stop by his office. Have a great day. Okay, perfect. We finished. Was easy, right? Yes. Do you want to listen? <laughs> Everybody is like, what is this? No, it's easy. It's easy if you pay attention. It's easy or it's it difficult for you? It's difficult for question. I don't understand one easy. question. Do you want to listen to it again? Do you want to listen to it again? Okay. I will play it again just, just because it's the first time, right? It's the first time, okay. Let me look for it. It's the first time, so we are going to go step by step. Vamos a ir paso a paso, okay? Just let me find it here. I think it's here. Okay, again. Now I'll listen to a conversation between a student and a professor. Hi, Professor Michaels. Yes? My name is James, and I'm a journalism major here, and I was wondering... If you're here to audition, James, I'm sorry, but this play is only open to theater majors, because it is part of the final project for one of my classes. Only students who are interested in taking my elective their senior year can be in it. Oh, uh, actually, I'm not here to audition. I was hoping if I could ask you a few questions about Shakespeare, specifically about the play Hamlet, uh, if you have a couple of minutes to spare. Oh, sure. Sorry I jumped the gun there. I've already had several students today try to audition who weren't theater majors, so I just assumed. It's no problem. I understand. Good, good. So, what would you like to know? Ask away. Thank you. Uh, so, I want to verify some details about the play. For one, does Hamlet take place in Denmark or Germany? Hamlet is from Denmark, and the setting of the play is a castle in Denmark. Okay, great. Uh, and can you explain to me the situation at the beginning of the play? Uh, it's so confusing. Who is married to who? Who is related to who? <laughs> sure. It can be definitely confusing. So, Hamlet's father, the king of Denmark, has just died. And when Hamlet returns home, he finds that his mother, the queen, has already married someone else, who turns out to be Hamlet's uncle or the dead king's brother. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, definitely sounds dramatic. Uh, have you ever been in Hamlet or directed the play? You know what? I hate to say this, but I haven't been in a production of Hamlet, nor have I directed one. It's one of my favorites, though, both of Shakespeare and in general. I would love to direct it someday. It's such an exciting play, lots of great characters. Have you seen it? I read it in high school, actually, but I haven't seen it performed. Maybe the school should put on a production of Hamlet. Absolutely. Maybe we can do that next year. What did you say your name was again? Oh, uh, James. 
All right, James. Thank you. I'm sorry, but I've got to run. I need to head to my next class. But if you have any more questions, my colleague Professor Thompson also loves Hamlet, and I'm sure he could answer any questions you might throw at him. Awesome. Thank you. I'll stop by his office. Have a great day. Okay, perfect. That a second time, it's easier, right? Yes, right. Perfect. perfect. Much better. Much better. Okay, perfect. Now we are going to uh, read the questions, right? This is the way that the TOEFL is, is going to be done, right? If you take it. For example, a question number one, why does the student go to see the professor? He wants to audition for the school play. He wants to ask the professor some questions about Hamlet. He wants to buy tickets for the play Hamlet, or he thinks the school should put on a production of Hamlet. Option B. It's letter B. Letter B. Letter B. Okay, let's see, let's see. I will write it down here because I have my papers here. Okay, number one will be letter B. Perfect. You see, easy, right? Number two, hmm. what does the professor Michaels initially think is the reason of the student came to see her. The student wants to audition for the school play. The student wants to take one of her classes. The student wants to become a theater major. The student wants to ask her a few questions about Hamlet. Either B. A. A. A or B? A. 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 Okay. Letter A. Letter A, okay. Let's see. L question three, what does the professor say Hamlet is one of her favorite plays. She has been in a production of Hamlet. She has directed a production of Hamlet. She enjoys the characters and thinks the story is exciting. She had to write a thesis paper about it when she was a student. I think there's A. There's A. 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 Letter A. Letter A. Some people say C, some people say B. Let's see. And this is the last one, I guess. What does the student mean when he asks the professor to explain the beginning of the play? The student is unsure about the relationships between the characters. The student wants to test her knowledge of the play. The student does not know the names of the characters. The student wants to make sure that he will like the play. Option A. Option A. Okay. Some some people say be there, be there. Okay. Let's see. Let's see the answers. Oh, we have another one. Sorry. Five. What does the professor Michaels imply when she says the professor Thompson also loves Hamlet? Professor Thompson is likely knowledgeable about Hamlet. Professor Michaels likes to talk about Hamlet with Professor Thompson. Professor Thompson wants to put in a production of, of Hamlet. Or the student should tell Professor Thompson that he loves Hamlet too. Letter B. Letter B. Letter D. Letter D. Letter B. Okay. Five letter B. Professor Michaels likes to talk about Hamlet with Professor Thompson. Okay, let's see the answers. One is letter B. Very good. The ones who wrote B, that's okay. <laughs> let's see number two. It's letter A, perfect. The student wants to audition for the school play. Number three is letter C. Some people say letter A, but now it's C. She enjoys the characters and thinks the story is exciting, right? Le number four, it's A, very good. The student is unsure about the relationships between the characters. And the last one is A. Yes. Professor Thompson is likely knowledgeable about Hamlet. Perfect. So how, yes. how, how did you do it in this test? Who got five? I did correct. better. I did better. Okay, very good. Do you have five? I ha have five? I got four. Four. Okay, perfect. Yes. Who had who had four? Who else? I have four. I did. Okay, you had four also. Who had three? Three, three correct ones. I have three. Three, perfect. Two, who had two? Me. 
<laughs> okay, perfect. That that's good. You at least had two right. Very good. One, one correct one. Nobody and zero, zero correct ones. Nobody. Okay. Very no. good. No one. Okay, very good. So you are doing great, right? You are you are going on the right track. So uh, do you have any suggestions? Like because this is the way that we are going to do the the listening part, right? A lot of conversations, a lot of lectures, and then we are going to uh, answer the questions. So do you have any question, any doubt, any comment? No, I think it's okay. Okay, very good, <clears throat> perfect. So uh, we are going to uh, start like that. I'm going, sometimes or tomorrow, we are going to have another practice. I'm going to play tomorrow two times the listening so you can start listening, get used to it. But on Wednesday, on Thursday, I will play just once, right? And we will have more practice. So uh, just check uh, the type of questions also, just, just purpose, just content, detail, speaker, understanding the function, making inferences and understanding organization. Uh, who took notes? Can can tomo notas? Who wrote some notes? Me teacher. I meet teacher. Were, were they useful or not? Yes. Mm. Yes, right. They are useful, right? At least if you write a little bit of the um of the words or conversation, right? Or if you make like a division, right? Or if it is a conversation between the student and the teacher, uh, that would be useful. So keep on practicing that. Tomorrow we are going to check how to to write notes. And also we are going to finish with the information, like five simple rules about um, the, the listening, right? The listening part. So let me see here. Yes. This will be the about the questions. That would be like a review that we are going to have on Wednesday. And today we had this one, right? the, the five tips for listening. Okay, so tomorrow we are going to talk about notes. We're going to talk about uh, this information that it's already provided here. And we are going to to answer these questions, right? For example, I can take notes and listen at the same time. If I take notes, then I might miss part of the passage or I don't know why I should write down in my notes. So we are going to check that also. And also prep prepositions, right? Sometimes uh, these are not very uh, good words for you to write. So we will have to write down mostly nouns, verbs, and adjectives, and we need to avoid prepositions, articles, auxiliary verbs, models, conjunctions, pronouns, and demonstra demonstrative, sorry. So we are going to talk about tomorrow, and these are content words. You already know that, right? Nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and main verbs, they are content words. So we are going to try to write just those. And this is an example actually here, in this video, you can find an example of the notes that this person took, right? In this case, uh, this person here is the student and this is the teacher, right? Or the person who was talking. And these are the ob objectives, the problem, if the student had a problem and the solutions that the teacher wrote. And these are some of the notes that he wrote. If you can see here, this person leaves like a long space in blank. Why? Why do you think that is? Because when they are speaking uh, and then the other person starts speaking, then that's how he organizes, right? This is when the other person is talking, right? So he doesn't get confused. Like that is the interaction, right? So this starts like the question of the student then um, the teacher, what the teacher is saying, then the teacher starts explaining things, then another question of the student and another question of the teacher. So that's how this person took notes on the same exercise, you see? So this is just about like getting used to it and also organize our ideas when we are taking notes. So we are going to talk about that tomorrow. And thank you for being here. Thank you for your effort. 
and don't get frustrated because I know the TOEFL is kind of difficult, but we are going step by step, okay? Thank you very much and have a nice evening. Thank you. 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 Thank you.